here on First News at 5, we're learning about trauma and how it affects people who commit crimes in our community. Yeah, the head of counseling for the Mahoning County Juvenile Court is our guest for our conversation that will air in three parts this week. Here's WKBN Community Affairs Director D. Crawford with our in-depth segment. In continuing our in-depth conversation addressing and trying to identify trauma, Karen Guerrero is joining me today. And um, what are the three E's of trauma so that we can get a better understanding? Um, so the three E's stand for event, experience, and effects. And it's a really nice simplistic way of understanding trauma and what it might look like for different individuals. So the event can really be anything, and a lot of people assume trauma has to be some major life-threatening experience. Well, it could be, but it doesn't have to be. It just has to be something that overwhelms our existing coping skills um, and activates our body's stress and alarm response system. Um, the experience tends to be overwhelming. I mean, I might, I might face the situation or the event with horror or terror or a lot of shame and guilt. It could be any of those things. Um, and then the effects could be short term or long term. That might include, you know, just feeling less safe in my environment. It might be feeling less safe with certain people. It might be hyper arousal where I'm over alert for potential threats that I might face. Um, it could be mood disturbances or behavioral disturbances. It could be more easily um, angered and agitated by situations that don't seem to warrant that response. I mean, it could really be a whole host of things. Um, and, and asking the individual like, when we're faced with those problematic behaviors, you know, please like, tell me what's happened to you is probably a good way for us to identify if this person's experienced something trauma or traumatic or adversive that's um, impacting their their behaviors so and their actions. So that starts the conversation mm -hmm. at least. Uh, let's, let's talk about your area, which mm -hmm. is juvenile, as we're seeing more and more of our youth who, quote unquote, are becoming desensitized, if you will, mm -hmm. to the violence because it seems to become a part of their daily environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, in my work at juvenile court, um, I'm the supervisor for the clinical services department and we do a lot of the mental health assessments for young people who are ordered to have mental health assessments. We provide counseling services for youth in our justice center um, and in the community. Um, and, and one of the things that we do see is that the young people involved with the justice system tend to have greater experiences with trauma and adversity. Um, and when we have greater experiences with trauma and adver adversity, we might be more likely to perceive threats in our environment and respond more quickly to perceived threats in our environment. So that could, of course, lead to um, greater instances of, of violence and, um, and disruptive behaviors. Um, but, but if we solely look at it as this is a problem child with poor behavior, we're missing the point. Mm -hmm. And we're missing an opportunity to be able to help that child and that family and the community that they live in. How early are you seeing as a clinician uh, the impact of trauma on our youth? Um, so the court, we generally deal with youth who are age 12 and older in terms of the delinquency dockets, um, but because we have other dockets um, and we deal with um, custody situations, we see children much younger than that as well, um, and, and we can see the effects of trauma on every age group that we serve. Um, you know, there's a particular type of traumatic event or traumatic events um, called adverse childhood experiences that can be very disruptive to development um, and result in a lot of issues and concerns throughout the lifespan. Again, trauma, mm -hmm. the three E's, communication, open communication mm -hmm. about that, um, is something we want to continue to talk about. And I want to thank you for joining me. I'm Dee Crawford. Community Affairs Director, WKBN.